Okay, so seems we are live. Let me just share the link now. Uh, uh, Fuba? Yep. Uh, give me two minutes. Okay, no problem. Okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, like, uh, 21,000. Mm -hmm. Kuba, I am uh, ready. You are ready? Cool, man. So, uh, all the links are pasted on Slack, and I think we are ready to go. So, the stage is yours, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So I'm now live. You are live and uh, okay. Lift up. Okay. Shall I expect? Uh, so no one will speak to me while I'm doing your presentation. Yeah, I think everyone will remain silent, <laughs> and uh, once your presentation is done, I guess many questions will will be asked. All right. Yeah. So, people, sorry, a noisy ambience here. So, we'll try to keep muted until Thank I you. have a question. And uh, thanks All right. for thanks for this course in advance. Um, so good good day, everyone from around the world, from Asia to Europe and America. Um, thank you for uh, giving your time to watch this presentation. Um, I myself is not, uh, uh, not uh, so uh, super experienced with Casper JS and Phantom JS, but uh, uh, as as I have ex as, as I have uh, doing my experimentation for the last few months, uh, I I saw the potential, and there are actually companies that are using this technology to uh, to commercialize the testing framework. So before I uh, go deeper on that, um, I would like to show to present to you my my slide. Um, here my, my screen. So welcome to Casper JS and Phantom JS. 
uh, both of this uh, technology has something to do with my childhood. I love Casper, the friendly ghost, um, and uh, looking at the present the the slide. I it's it's really it's really good to see two ghosts working at this working together as as a team and uh, so Casper JS and Phantom JS uh, both of this technology are uh, essential for uh, testing and. Phantom JS. So Phantom JS are actually this is a technology that that has been used by so many. Uh, this is a headless version of WebKit. Uh, this is also considered as a virtual browser. Uh, you can do anything from the terminal. So you can program a JavaScript to interact with with the browser. Uh, through Phantom JS, and uh, it has supports uh, for uh, different browsers. Um, and if you see the logo, it's it looks scary, but it's actually friendly. And um, the installation of uh, of Phantom JS is so simple. Uh, as long as you have Node, uh, well, uh, I I presume that most of us uh, knows how to install um, Node JS, and as long as you have npm, you can install it by using uh, npm global installation of Phantom JS so you can uh, use you can use it anywhere in the terminal or anywhere any projects that you have in, in inside your server or environment. Uh, in this presentation I actually prepared a uh, Azure service uh, using Ubuntu twenty four Ubuntu twelve uh, fourteen point zero four and so these are just the steps that I did. So first is I installed uh, Phantom JS. So Phantom JS <coughs> uh, is a JavaScript. Uh, it's built on JavaScript, and this is how we use. Uh, this is the codes that you can actually uh, type, uh, write. Like for example, you want to. Uh, open uh, Google website, google.com, and uh, this is this is how we write it. Uh, a typical JavaScript uh, coding, and this is just opening uh, Google Google site within within your terminal. So this particular code, you need to store this. As a JavaScript file, so you can run it <coughs> using using this code below, Phantom JS space. Uh, spe uh, so my script JS includes this particular snippets. So inside inside that my script that JS includes this uh, small snippets of code, and after you run this code, you'll be able to see uh, the content of of the Google.com site, wh whatever inside that uh, page that content. And what else can we do? Um, well, we can use it for injection execution of uh, JavaScript. Codes perform actions, take screenshots, monitor performance. Um, in the demonstration later on, I will show you 
the commercial version of these technologies and the the project that I did. Um, so that's for Phantom JS. Now let's proceed to Casper JS. And one thing to remember, Phantom JS is not a test framework. It's a virtual browser. And this is a very essential for Casper JS to execute uh, its uh, uh, behaviors. Okay, let's proceed to our other friend, Casper. So Casper JS is an API. Uh, a, this is the test framework layer on top of Phantom JS. So it will not work without uh, without uh, Phantom JS, and it provides actually the my first project that I did that I that I was using Casper is is to be able to scrap the data from an authenticated site. Well, I mean, it's so simple to scrap websites, like for example, Yahoo or Google.com. I can I can create a Python Python code or a PHP code to scrap or scrape the data out of these websites. But it's a different story if you're going to scrape data that requires authentication. Uh, meaning, like for example, I want to scrape the the data from my Facebook profile, so I can use Casper JS because Phantom JS provides a virtual browser. I can basically put in my credentials, username and password, emulating the what's on the, the actual U browser in our Chrome or, or, or Firefox. So by pro even in the terminal, it will prompt the username, the password, and um, I will show that later. So Casper.js has not only scraping data, but it can also be used uh, in different behaviors. Like for example, I want to scrape a data after logging in to the website and then clicking a JavaScript, probably in Ajax tabbing. Uh, I know we can create a Python Python code to scrape to attend, to log in and scrape whatever inside that page. But it's a different story if you're going to scrape the data after logging in, and once inside, you still need to click an AJAX tab. Uh, that's that's uh, those are kinds of of behavior that Casper JS supports. Clicking uh, at, at uh, an element, probably an ID or a class within that particular link. So it supports this kind of behavior. And Casper.js can also, with, with the help of Phantom.js, uh, can take screenshots and take uh, assertions, meaning uh, you, can, you can create a logic. Uh, this is essential for testing the assertions. And pretty much that it for its features. I think there are more more of that if you combine these technologies. So my dear friend, uh, I know I know probably some of you are expecting that I need to go deeper in each of these technologies. I'm sure we will if it maybe from in 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 the next uh, sessions. But uh, I just wanna uh, just give you some basic introduction of these technologies, and then later on, I will demonstrate the, the commercial version of these uh, technologies and see its value. All right, so to install Casper.js, so once you, have, you are in the server, you can basically uh, using, it, it's using nodes like 
Node.js, like Phantom.js, as long as you have NPM uh, globally, you can install Casper.js by using this uh, code uh, in the screen. Okay, so let's see the codes within the Casper.js. So very basic uh, to JavaScript-ish coding style. So this one is um, google.com. It basically uh, browsing google.com and filling the form for search. So in this instance, we use the query ghost. And then we click this particular uh, hashtag QBQFPA can be designated as the ID of the submit button. And then once we click that, there is a next in line, Casper then function. It, once, it, once it process this particular execution, um, this echo, this well, just print out the the title of the result page. So if there's a results, I'm sure that particular get title value is uh, varies to the results. So you will get the keywords printed there. And of course, to run this, to execute this, you need to uh, close it with casper.run function. And this particular code, you copy this and put it in a JavaScript file and run it okay. just like phantom.js. Uh, we use casper.js space. The my, my script.js includes all the codes uh, at the top. So once you execute this, it will basically execute the browsing google.com and then search and then uh, fill out the, the keyword ghost and click automatically. And you will get the result, the title of the page. <clears throat> so very basic. So these are just basic function of, of Casper.js um, and there are actually advanced features of Casper.js. Uh, like, for example, uh, <clears throat> multiple, multiple links, and each link has its own uh, classes or IDs that we need to trigger. So that can also be possible. Or a JavaScript link or an Ajax link. Um, <clears throat> So Casper.js can handle this, this, this type of uh, execution. And this one is a test, unit test. Uh, it's using assertion. So this is how Casper.js uh, looks like uh, when you are using a, a unit testing. So this one, you, browsing google.com and then it matches the title if it contains Google. So only uh, that one. And once it's, once <clears throat> the title match Google, it basically check. You will see a green icon in your terminal that this particular unit test passed. So <clears throat> If you've, uh, you've experienced with other testing, like unit testing or um, simple test, uh, they have the same uh, logic, especially the assertion thing. All right, so that's the basic basic uses of of this uh, of Casper JS. All right. Um, sorry, uh, I'm sorry that my presentation slide was not enough I st due to 
uh, I, I'm sorry to say this, but the uh, server that I've actually uh, been working for the past few weeks uh, reached out its daily limit. So I wasn't, I, I can't be able to log in to that particular server. But don't worry, uh, I prepared, I actually spin up another instance and and uh, installed Casper JS, Phantom JS, uh, for I think three hours ago. So in three hours ago, I was able to set up, set this up, <coughs> the Phantom JS, Casper JS, and uh, there's another technology that I would like to introduce to you. It's called as. Uh, Rate. So, rate is a ghost or ghost-like image of someone. <laughs> so, rate is actually another friend and a ghost. Uh, and now there are three. So, rate is actually a visual regression testing tool. Uh, what it does, it basically uses this technology, Casper JS and Phantom JS, and uh, creates its. It's actually built on Ruby. Uh, it, it. Let's go to rate uh, BBC. So rate was actually developed by developers from BBC, and. It says here, a uh, rate is a responsive screenshot comparison tool, and it's using this technologies, Phantom JS, Casper JS, uh, Slimmer JS, and Image Magic and Ruby. So these five are very essential to this uh, technology. So this one requires a gem in your uh, environment, you need to have a gem to install rate. So to install it, you can just uh, execute. Sorry, I think we're not seeing this screen. Uh, sorry for that. Let me again uh, Okay. Okay. Now I think you you are seeing my screen. So this is the the rate that I'm um, introducing to you. Another technology. So it's a responsive screenshot comparison tool that utilizes Casper JS and Phantom JS, and uh, it has a comparison uh, and detect its differences between Im captured images and installing it requires gem and um, you can set this up by using uh, rate setup or if you want to use Casper JS as part of your capture image capturing you that you use rate setup Casper. <clears throat> okay, so these three technologies, um, by using these three technologies, you can actually come up with a commercial grade uh, testing framework. And I would like to introduce to you the Ghost Inspector. I'd like to, to share again the screen. Okay, so this one, guys, is 
the result of the of this of the technologies that I've introduced to you, Casper JS, Phantom JS, and the 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 probably the rate uh, idea. So someone created this uh, testing framework known as Ghost Inspector, and I've used this Ghost Inspector in our project in GameCrate. So if you, you see if you see here. Uh, these are the behavior of okay. So this ghost inspector uh, will help you check uh, or re to, t to help you in regression testing. Meaning you can see the visuals of your website in automated manner. So like for example this one, uh, our client, uh, this scenario is actually, I've used this because our client wants to check because uh, um, uh, this particular uh, content, this uh, the one with agent, I think this, this is from a game from the movie Agent 47, I think that's a new movie, and I created this test test suite to to provide our client that that the products the the products below the below the below the this particular ad is not changing. Prove that to the client and. The left image is the the captured image that has no problem, and the other side was the generated contents that is being generated every hour. So I receive an email and an email if there's a big difference in the images. Like for example, the images from the right has a 20% or over 10% difference in the image. Then it will send me an email that there is an error or failed test. Because I uh, ghost inspector, you can actually adjust the threshold. Like for example, uh, if there's 50, if there's 20% difference between the two images, it will email or it will send you an error test. And in this case, uh, it emailed me because uh, there's more than 10% uh, difference in the images, in the two images. Because uh, this particular image that are highlighted in, in red is an is a ad rotator ad. So uh, it captures a different uh, ad at, the, at, at, the, at this time of capture, and the same the same is with this particular uh, ad with highlighted in red. But the, mo the most important thing is, thing is this products, and I was able to prove our client that that the, the products are not changing. Because uh, our clients are keep on saying that the products are changing every time that they are browsing. So the only elements that are changing in here are the ads. So I was able to prove that by using this ghost inspector. But this ghost inspector has a lot of features, not just uh, not just uh, uh, automation of your test regression test, but it can also uh, it can also re uh, test from web, mobile, to mobile devices from 1,200 uh, resolution to 800 or 1,024 to 800, 600 to 320. So you can basically capture those images. In in different uh, uh, 
uh, sizes. And in this particular unit test, I've only captured the 1024 uh, res resolution or size, screen size. And, but this, this particular account is just a trial because uh, Ghost Inspector is commercial. Uh, it has a $129 per month if you're going to use that with 30,000 test runs per month. And if you want to go large, it will charge you $499. So, <clears throat> because of the technology that I've learned, the Casper JS and the Phantom JS in the rate, I managed to 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 use these technologies and and create my own testing framework, just like those inspector. And <clears throat> I would like to show you uh, the the open source or the project counterpart of this ghost inspector. And uh, I actually prepared three uh, three test sites. <clears throat> Are you okay there, uh, brothers? Are you still with me? Yeah, we are. We are. So here. Absolutely. All right. Thanks. So I prepared uh, three domain test domains. Uh, first one is this test. I don't know if you are saying this. Probably not. Uh, let me share that. Share my screen. Can I share my whole screen? Is that possible? No. Okay, so that's the test one that code graphs that ph. <clears throat> so this is a basic Drupal installation with home and about us. <clears throat> so if I click about us, oh, sorry, share one there. <clears throat> okay. So the Drupal test one is a Drupal 7 version, and it has a home page with picture on it, and it has a about us page with just one paragraph, and. <clears throat> I've also prepared another test site. It's called test2.woodcrafts.ph. There. Drupal test2. Actually, the home page of test1 and test2 are 100% identical. The only difference is the title, this one. Uh, the 1 and 2, right? So test two has a Drupal test two as title, and test one has a Drupal test one. Now, I will use uh, Phantom JS, Casper JS, and Rate to be able to detect these differences in the home page. Probably with the slight differences. Probably it's uh, in terms of of percentage, it has 1% um, image difference. And, and uh, these three technologies will be able to detect that difference. So how much more when we are uh, working on, on, on uh, pixel perfect websites? This indicates that uh, this is a potential uh, reliable testing tool for our development. So let me go to my server. Uh, this is the server that I've seen up 
three hours ago. Um, I hope you see it better. Uh, can I confirm if I if I'm if I zoom this? Do you also see that it enlarge? I'm just curious. So silence means yes. All right. So I have the test one. This is the document root of my test one that code grabs that pH. And I have test two, which is for the test two that code grabs the pH. And the XCC stands for X crash course uh, is our rate. Meaning these are the combination of three technologies. Oh, sorry, XCC. So this is the the contents of of my uh, technology uh, project based on three technologies: Phantom JS, Casper JS, and and Rate. So I'll be using Rate. So first is uh, the scenario is I would like to test both home page, <clears throat> so the home page of the Drupal test one and the Drupal test two to see the difference between this home page. Because I myself, if I will just see it with my eye, I might miss this, this particular difference. Um, and <clears throat> Uh, to do that, I will just uh, uh, let me create a test. Okay. So all I need to do is to create to type in rate. Sorry. I hope. Uh, you see this in large uh, size. Uh, set up Casper. So it basically created this particular uh, JavaScript for for my uh, usage, and I will go to configs. I will see the component that YAML. And this is the, the the code that was generated. So if I see that, I would like to see the, the code inside. Um, there's a uh, browser. So you can basically select which uh, technology uh, you'll be using. You can either use Phantom JS or Slimmer JS. Slimmer JS is, is actually um, this is same as Phantom JS, but Slimmer JS is for I think because uh, uh, Phantom JS is for WebKit. Slimmer JS is for uh, the one that is being used by Chrome, and then there's another technology that they, that is being used for IE. I forgot uh, the that technology, but since I'll be using Phantom JS, I will let Phantom JS use Casper JS as as the capture capturing technology. And this particular snap file, and um, snap file is basically this is where it captures the the particular image. So if we let Later on, we'll, we will see this the code in the Casper JS. Um, if you're using RAID, it is being it is defaulted for BBC website, so you have to change that domain. So this is the domain that you will be testing. 
And you can also specify the screen width. Uh, it depends. Uh, some are using six different sizes. Some I see five. And of course, if you will use, if you will utilize, or if you will screenshots for all different sizes, that will also take time. So, so as not to uh, take more time, we will just use two screen widths there. And clickable guide. So clickable guide are, uh, this is like, I want to go to bbc.uk slash news slash entertainment parts. And the selector is this particular class. So what it will do when it runs, it will basically go to the website and then click, go to the entertainment arts one two seven two one one ninety one, and then select this particular class, and then it captures. There's actually a JS there. What that's what that one the JavaScript before capture. So you will be able to see the difference between uh, before and 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 after. So first is the if you want to see if there's difference uh, if it's more than uh, uh, sorry this is the image magic fast um, uh, the most important here is the threshold so five is the threshold meaning this is the difference that between those images. If the threshold is more than that, then it will also alert you. <clears throat> Sorry. Actually, I will not utilize that because I've already prepared the component YAML from this. So there's a configs here. This is the actual, the actual component that I've prepared. So if you see, <clears throat> I've the same. Um, this is the directory where this is the directory where all the screenshots will be uh, saved at the shots folder. These are the domains that I will be testing. Test one and test two and com and. Uh, Compared the compared the two, I will be grabbing 320 and one one to 80 screen sites. So in the paths, I will be just going to the home page. So the, the slash indicates home page, and then the selector is body. Just that, no, just very basic. And so it says here uh, you can actually sh uh, choose the how your results to be displayed. So I choose the what's default, which is the dips first are shown sorted by difference in size. Okay. Now the this is the moment where we will be capturing the images. So to do that, I will just uh, type in rate. Uh, capture and name of the config, which is the component. That one. And are you ready? Ready? Yeah, sure. we're ready. There. You're it's ready. Now creating, it's now creating folders. It's saving the images. And we're done. The gallery is generated. Um, I will be giving you the link where to access the, the gallery. Uh, it's uh, xcc codecrops.ph shots gallery.html and there. You see this? This area where there's a blue, blue thing, it means that that's the particular difference between the two websites. 
So for the mobile, for for 320 pixels and for 120 because we've only specified two. So this is this is the very main thing that this ghost inspector is actually providing. And why spend that much if we can actually have our own uh, free version of these technologies? Um, I think at this moment I can already uh, welcome questions. If you have questions, uh, just that I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. This is not too in depth in Casper JS or Phantom JS because this is the main the main thing. I just want to see. I just want to let let you know how the technologies were integrated in the enterprise version of the test framework, and this is our own. We can actually use this for our project. I really would like to develop this as part of the XLab uh, because this is very potential in helping us because we can actually automate this testing every hour or every 24 hours and let our project managers see all the pages if there are differences in every hour or every day. So yeah, that's all and uh, I hope uh, I did some convincing power and <laughs> and help you with with this testing tools that we can use in the future. So thank you so much and yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Paul, for preparing uh, that awesome course. Uh for sharing your knowledge and experience. Um, we had quite a few people watching the course live, and I'm sure more will watch it later on YouTube. And that certainly proves that x courses are a great idea. So thanks, Ardi, for initiating that uh, idea yes. a few months ago. Um, x teamers do we have any questions to Paul? Yes, actually. So uh, can you guys hear me? Uh, yes, Ardi. Yeah, please go ahead, Ardi. Ardi, go ahead. Hmm. Ardi, we can't hear you. Perhaps you would like to just type the question. Hello? Oh, yes, yeah. Ardi. Can you see me? Uh, I just see your hero icon. Yeah, uh, Ardi, maybe you can type in your question. Hey, Paul. Hi, Stereo. Hey, I have a question in the meantime. Uh, maybe, maybe it's too specific. Uh, in, in such a case, just um, you can reach me on Slack or something like that. Um, I want to know um, what happens or how how do you recommend to um, to act when uh, how how is Casper um, alerting you or letting you know that that for instance um, a selector you want to use for clicking somewhere is is just not there. What will happen if, if or what will happen if you try to capture something? Okay. <clears throat> yeah. That, that's it. Yeah. Uh, Actually, that's a very good question because uh, when I was using Casper JS uh, in the past, uh, once the website is too big, too heavy, it takes a long time to to load it, and Casper JS sometimes captures right away. Probably in two seconds, it captures, and when it captures, there's no loaded. Uh, the site is still loading, so it captures nothing. 
so once 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 it happens it basically you will you will see no image it you'll get the uh, an empty image so the the remedy or the solution is to increase the configuration within Casper JS. You can actually set its configuration that it will uh, it will use 10 seconds probably, uh, so that it captures the website in full load. So in that way, it captures it properly. Cool. And what if someone changes the DOM? In a way that that um, a selector you're trying to reference is is no longer there and will not get loaded at all. Um, if there's no selector, uh, can can you capture that as an error? Get get logged somewhere? Like um, Casper telling you, I didn't yes. find this 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 button. Yes, yes, yes. It has it has. You can actually create a logic for that. That. Uh, if um, while it's loading and and that particular class is not showing, then it will give you a log that I haven't seen this particular class or particular ID. So uh, so go home, something like that. Cool. Thanks. That was it. Yes. Um, yes, Ardi. Yeah, we actually have a question from Ardi, and basically Ardi would like to know if uh, the framework is named uh, Rave. Yes, yes, right, from BBC developers. Um, but actually, we can we can be, we can do so much with it. We can actually extend it. Uh, cost, we can customize it in in just like for example the Casper JS because. Uh, as you see, there are there are libraries there. This those are the default uh, Casper JS library. So you can extend it. You can basically do crazy things like what Serio is uh, telling us. Like for example, a uh, somewhere in the page has a selector that is not still lo that that is loading because that isn't loading yet because. It will be triggered by a, a JavaScript or a time, probably a time interval, things like that. Casper JS can can handle that. So uh, probably in in the next session, I can I can discuss uh, the full detail or the advanced area of the Casper JS. Um, uh, like for example, this uh, I would like to capture. The once once log in to the website, uh, I will also click the uh, link button, and that particular link button is not a it's not a link, but uh, a hashtag probably for Ajax uh, trigger. So it can also be captured by 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 uh, Casper JS. So this that's actually the the thing that I really really love. In Casper JS, because it can capture uh, its uh, JavaScript uh, triggers or or AJAX. Yeah. Awesome, mate. Thank you, um, and also thank you, Sergio and Ardi, for those interesting questions. Do we have any other questions? Maybe I do have another one. Sure, go ahead. Thank you. Um, Paul, um, is there a way for Casper to actually check um, variables in JavaScript, global variables, or something like that? Yes. Uh, I tried that particular uh, that particular situation in Drupal when I was working with the project that was. Integrating this Casper JS, yes, I can I can be able to uh, access all the JavaScript variables. Uh, in Drupal, we are using Drupal behaviors, so I can basically access those variables uh, within Casper JS. That's 
pretty cool. Can't wait to get the chance to use this with the brush. Yeah. yeah, I think that we uh, we have one more question from Casper. Um, any tips on using Casper JS in C environment? Um, I think CI would would be best fit for for Casper JS um, to automate. This 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 very uh, project that I presented because right now I just did it manually by uh, executing this rate uh, executions. So if we can harness this and put it into a, a bash or a shell script and then put it into CI or or Capistran or Travis, uh, I think it will be more powerful. And I, I, I think Ghost Inspector are using this, uh, also using these technologies too. Because uh, in Ghost Inspector, once you test something, when you run something, it basically run an environment, probably a Docker, and, and automating all the, the needed classes and libraries and before it captures the images. So uh, that's what I've heard from the developer of the Ghost Inspector. So CI would be best fit for this. Awesome. Any other questions, guys? Let me take a look at Slack. All right, I guess we have no more questions. Uh, so once again, thank you, Paul. Uh, you've just won yourself a unique Crash Course uh, T-shirt. I cannot show it yet because it's still being designed. <laughs> but from now on, everyone who uh, decides to share their experience and knowledge in the form of a Crash Course will receive one. Uh, next Crash Course is uh, scheduled for the next week. Uh, it will be presented by... Uh, Mihoka Valets, and it's going to be about introduction to Haskell and uh, pure script. Yeah, and that's that's that is something that uh, uh, we are waiting for. And uh, thank you so much, guys. And uh, thanks, RD, for initiating this project. I think this is this will help our organization, our community. We can even invite other uh, friends out there. So, thank you, everyone. Certainly. Thank Thanks, Paul. All right, signing out. Thank right. you. See you. Thanks, everyone. Nice one, Paul.